Just now? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yep. Welcome everyone to our class on uh, in-depth study of the Torah, of course, through the eyes of the Gemara. Uh, what, I, what I just wanted to present a little before we go to the Rishonim is what, what I call being off the page. The, the, the problem uh, the, of learning Gemara is, is that a lot of the work is happening off the page, which means that the, the words are directing you toward a problem. And you have to understand what the problem is because it's not spelled out. It's, it's spelled out in a way that you can get to it, but you have to then think about what the problem is. And by thinking about what they're handling, you understand what they're talking about. It's the best way I can express it. So the, I just want to show you uh, two very quick things. I hope it'll be quick. Uh, basically, what's happening here is we have three uh, three words in the Pesukim, and then we have inferences made by the uh, the Tanayim, one with Yashiv, and, and the Amarayim uh, uh, with a bias question. So the what has to be appreciated here is that there's there's three words in the three words in two different the kesiv, uh, when it when it comes to paying back when it comes to paying back damages so kesiv kesiv is um, mentioned in bor and that's going to go throughout all the nazikin um, and then the word yashiv in the same pasik comes to include uh, Shavikesev, Afilu, Subin. Okay, so this Afilu, Subin was from the Bryce. So we had an extra word called Shavikesev. From the Pusik of, of uh, Bor, we have Kesev and we have Yashiv uh, on one side. Kesev meaning money and Yashiv meaning uh, Shavikesev, the equivalent of money. So that's one Pusik. On the other side, we had this Pusik called Meitav. Uh, which also went all over to all in the Zikin through Tachan Sinisham Kesev. Now, the reason why these two pas Pasukim converged was because how we learned Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva, uh, the Machlokhsim, Rabbi Akiva, and Rabbi Yishmael brought us into uh, the meaning of the Meitav Pasuk is how you pay for damages. So now, once we had that, a buyer now said, wait a minute. We have now two pursuing that are talking about paying for damages. One Pusik says Kesev and Yashiv, and the other Pusik says Meitav. Now he sees a contradiction between those two Pasukim. Okay? Because Meitav, he says, means uh, you can only use the best of your land. Now, the simple diuk would be you can't use Bainanis and Zibris of your land. That would be the simple diuk. But he goes further and he says, Midi achrina lo. And nothing else. Or, and, and, and no other thing, put it that way. And yet he says, Yashiv tells us that you can use all other types of shows. So from Meitav, he sees, he, he sees, he's a, sees a mute of, um, of Shavik Kesev, and especially Ben. And that's his contradiction, okay? When Kesev did not bother him, it seems. If it said Kesev and Meitav, he wouldn't have had such a, would have had a problem. His problem is the problem between Meitav and Yoshiv. Meitav eliminates anything but the best of your land, and Yoshiv brings everything in. So that's the basic conflict that we're dealing with, and that's why I say it's off the page. You have to be aware that these two pasukim are interreacting and causing us problems, because one seems to be the negation of the other. So because of this, that's where, that's because of this problem, the Gemara now is going to work very hard and give five different solutions to to the this problem. How do we put these two pasukim together? Okay, so just again, just just 
briefly, Rava wants to separate the two pasukim completely and 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 make what's called an akimta. Okay, we said in uh, we look, looked at the lush in there. By the way, I've been I've been in my daf yomi. I've been now keying on this thing low kasha when the gemara says low kasha. It seems low kasha when the gemara uses it to say there's no kasha because the two pasukim are talking about two different uh, talking about apples and oranges, two different items. Okay. Whereas Akash is going to have to say that they're talking about the the, the same uh, thing, but we're going to have to make a fine distinction between one and the other. But here, the uh, Rubber's first answer is that when we said Kesava Filusub in this Pasik, so we were talking about if you want to settle out of court. Okay, then you can give anything, even Subin, to pay back damage that you did to the Nizak. But if you go to court, you 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 stand to lose what's very precious to you, which is your best land. So make sure that you're not just dragging this person to court, that you really, really know that you do not do it and you're going to win the case, because if not, then he'll be able to take away your, even your best land. So that was a solution. The downside of that solution was that we didn't have any smach, we didn't have any, we didn't have any uh, uh, remis to that in the pasukim. He, uh, Rebbe Lloyd tried to bring Yishalem and then a bias that that failed. So that solution was, although it's uh, it's it's very it's the first one because it 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 uh, does not disturb any of our premises. Okay. In other words, we say meitavin media chrina lo is correct. We say kedafilu subin, and then we don't have to change any of our premises, and we just say that they're talking about apples and oranges in and out of court. Okay. But that failed. Why? Because we didn't see any reliable source in the Chumash to say that, okay? Because Yishalem could mean Balkor, who could also mean Baratzon. Now, a bias solution, a bias solution is to uh, is to get rid of the diuk from Meitavin Mini Achrin Lo, and he's going to say when it said Meitav, it's it uh, it means even Meitav. So then the Kesev and Yashiv is redundant. So he says the reason why you, you need the, the Yashiv Pasik, even though you can learn everything from Metav, is because of a special quality in land. Land values go down in the winter, and you can take Metav in the winter, but if you decide to take something else, Mr. Nizak, then you're going to have to pay the Nissan price, the higher price, and you won't get your reduction. So it's sort of a um, help to the mazik that he shouldn't be exploited, because no one really sells their land now, and that's why the price is let down. But Meitav, you have a right, because you, 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 you hurt the man's property, you have to pay now, uh, but you can't get the advantage of being a sincere. So that's a buy. Now, a buy fails in the eyes of the Gemara, because um, the spirit of the law is that we're trying to help the Nizak. And the way Abai is learning, we're trying to help the Mazak from being overexploited. So the Gemara drops that and goes to the second answer of Rava. Okay. But you see already, Abai is more dochuk. He had to drop his, the Meitav, the, the simple, the simple diuk was Meitav. He started that, Meitav being meaning you know, alone, and then he, he said it was a ribu. So he, that was a, that was a, the, the weakness in his learning, uh, but it wasn't rejected because of the weakness. It was rejected because um, it fit into the spirit of what the Torah meant by meta. It's, uh, it's helping the nizak, not the mazik, and according to him, it's helping the mazik. Okay, so now Rava now comes and he he tries to s solve the problem a different way by saying that. Also, by getting rid of this diuk, meitav in media chrinalo. No, it doesn't mean media chrinalo. It's actually the meitav is an explanation of the yashiv, or put it better yet, yeah, meitav is an explanation. That's, that's that's a good way of saying it. In other words, really, kesev you can use in all types of kesev, even subin. What does meitav come to tell you? Meitav tells you just like you have to give the best of your land, you also have to give the best of your subin. Okay, so. That upsets a lot of our premises because we thought that number one, Metav came to eliminate. Uh, when you say land, it comes to eliminate uh, 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 Metatl and Shavik Kesev, and he says it doesn't. It comes to modify it. Uh, 
um, and also, but that, but that didn't bother the, the Gemara. The Gemara was bothered because, again, if we look at the strength of the Pasuk, the Pasuk says, Mate of Sedehu, and Rashi explains that it should have just said, Mate of Stam, if it really just meant to um, uh, limit all the types of payments. So the Gemara put that on the, on the side. Okay, so now we came to Rev Papa. Rev Papa. Now, how does Rev Papa is, is uh, going to do a radical departure because he's going to leave Meitavin Media uh, Excuse me, he's going to leave Meitavin, but he's going to Media Chrina. He's going to say, no, it does not come to eliminate Yashiv. Not at all. Why? Why? Because it turns out that that um, that Kesev that Kesev is is then Subin price. Okay, has to explain it. So we we it's worse than it's it's worse than yeah it's worse than uh, Meitav is worse than Subin. and also worse than Yashiv. Meitav Sedehu. Why? Why is oh, why is Meitav Sedehu? Oh, very important point here, and, and the Ramchal made a big point of this in the beginning of Derek Tfunos. So much depends upon the bechinot, the aspects that you're talking about. How do you how do you line up these various items? As I said, when you line up the kids in the class, is it because of height? Is it because of grades? Is it because of uh, uh, age? You know. Whatever you decide is the factor that you're going to line things up, so that we'll understand why one thing precedes the other. So, Rav Papa says that really all of the Metaltalin and Subin are better than any type of land. Why? Because he looks at the lineup as what can you, um, um, how fast you can get your money, put it that way. Kesev is the best. In his terms, because Kesev gives the Nizak the freedom to do anything he wants, he can buy his cow if it was, or he can buy his uh, car, carom. He can do whatever he wants. And Yashiv is good because he'll never get stuck. Although it needs a rebuy, why? It's 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 a level down in the line because, you know, uh, you you don't have the ready cash. You're going to have all the subin around, and you really want your to buy some ca uh, a vineyard, or you want to buy you want to buy some uh, uh, seeds, or you want to buy a cow, whatever you want to buy. So you're going to have to translate that into cash, okay? But at least the, the when the Torah said a filusubin, it it said you are going to be able to do it. We don't have to force the the nizak to to uh, to give you cash. I mean, the mazik to give you cash because you'll be able to convert your uh, Metatlin and even Subin into cash. But when it came to land, land is not e easily convertible. So in the aspect of uh, liquidity or convertibility, land is on the bottom of the scale. Why? Because you don't have as many customers, and that's the factor here. The more customers you have to buy things, the easier it is to sell. And land is limited to the, the physical people around your area. So when we line up the, the um, items in that manner, it turns out that Cocker's is, 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 is worse than Metatlin. Because Metatlin, you'll, you'll be able, it's, 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 it's more liquid because you have more customers, and, and Karka is not. Of course, you only have a few customers. They don't want your property. If, you don't, if they don't want the property, then you're not going to be able to get the money to go buy your uh, a cow or whatever was destroyed. So, Rapop explains that the Torah, however, said that if the Masik wants to give his best land, so then that's acceptable. Why? Because the few customers will be very motivated to buy the best of the land. So the Nizak won't get stuck again because even though there's a few customers around, but the best everybody wants. Or so he'll be able to get his money back. So in that aspect, he'll 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 be able to, you know, get compensated for his damage and buy back what he needs. However, Banus and Zibris land, that already is too hard to sell and uh, you can't use it when you want to pay back. Okay, so that was the big surprise of Rep. Rep. Papa uh, and, and Rep. Shuvin, uh, 
Reb Yehun, Reb, Reb Shuna, both of them, uh, when they came from Beirav, so they, they brought this explanation, and it upsets a very uh, basic premise that we've always been having, which was that land was better than Metaltalan. That was our premise up to this point. And they said, no, land is actually worse, and only Metav goes in. All right? So it's what I'm trying to show here, I hope I'm, I'm being successful, is that this is the real debate going on in the yeshiva, you see, which is how does the Torah look at these various items in their relationship to each other, and also, very important, within the context of Nazikin, you see, you see, of course we have to also talk about that, it's Nazikin here, it's not, it's not paying a balchov, it's not doing other things, okay, so we have to be very aware of the the uh, universe that that this discussion is happening in and that'll of course impact on whether we can now extend this into other places like Balchov or Mechitos, we'll see all those interesting things further on but that was the big Kiddush of Rev Papa now we have the Gemara has this uh, break I don't know if you had a chance to look at it the Gemara after discussing Rev Papa, and it does not knock him out. So that seems to be, as far as this page of Gemara, that's the conclusion. The conclusion is you can use Kesev and Yashiv, uh, means all types of Mentatlin, even Subin, but if you use land, it has to be the best. That's the conclusion on this page. Now, the Gemara then goes and discusses a few other uh, issues. Oops, not there. Okay. I have a big problem. I don't know if I should write in English or Hebrew anymore, but that's I'm going to have to <laughs> figure that one out. But whatever it is, I, I have to do both. So here, when I when I outline the Gemara, you see, <clears throat> this is basically uh, Rebbe Shmoyel's um, um, and Rebbe Akiva's debate and the explanation of that. And then we just spoke about uh, Abaya's dilemma, his his Rumia. He says Akasha, Romy, the two Pesukim coming together. And we spoke about Rava's solution, Abaya's own solution, Rava's second solution, that up the Rav Papa's solution. So those are the four solutions. And I also wanted to emphasize, because I think it's, these, these little points that I'm bringing up are, are often missed when, when people learn. They don't concentrate on the structure of the Gemara itself. And I think that's... Uh, you, you you gain quite a lot by seeing that structure. So as I've been trying to prove here, so um, we went down the list and we we the answers we gave changed certain premises. I, I like to call that the Copernican revolutions, you know, because everyone held that the sun went around the earth, and he said, no, no, the earth goes around the sun. So all these are very very big revolutions and thinking. Each one in 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 progression, more and more. Uh, changing more and more premises that we thought were uh, solid, like the relationship of Metav to Yashiv, like Rep. Papages. Okay, be that as it may, now the Gemara <coughs> goes into uh, another interesting problem of this uh, Brisa that we had between Rebbe, Rebbe Akiva and Rebbe Shmuel, which is what's called Metav? Is Metav, when, when you try to say the, the Mazik has to give the best of his field, well, is it subjective or is it objective? Now, the Gemara goes into a whole discussion of that because of, it's a very important question here. How do you determine what's called Maitav? What does that mean? There, there could be that, that uh, a person has, for instance, triple A land. And uh, his worst land, so he just says a very wealthy man, and his worst, worst land happens to be what the world considers best. But he just has, you know, super rivers and, 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 and fertile property. He just... You know, so now when when the Torah says Metav, does it mean the objective Metav? If you put it on the world market, his worst land happens to be grade A of the rest uh, in the rest of the world's uh, terms, or no? Uh, he has to give subjectively his best land, which is his triple A land, when he wants to pay. Of course, never more than the damage, but still, that's what it goes. So that's the that's another aspect of this discussion of Abaya and uh, excuse me of uh, Rabbi Kiv Rabbi Shmuel. And it goes through that whole discussion, and it brings proofs, and it gets involved in all different uh, problems with, uh, with land. Anyway, the, the conclusion is, according to Tosvos, is that we do go according to the subjective price. So the person who um, 
who has AAA land has to give his AAA land, even though his single A land is equal to the best of the world. That's the conclusion. So that's the question. At the end of the discussion, which branches into other cases of, uh, of selling land and uh, uh, the order of selling land and who can get first, there's a whole branch over there, which is over here. I'm not going to get involved in it. All of a sudden, Rev Huna comes back, you see, and he is talking about our problem in different terms. Why do I say different terms? Because he starts differently. His problem starts with Metav and Kesef. Metav and Kesef. He says, O Kesef, O Metav. Now, we, we learned in Derek Tefunos that a Marubin Yanim, okay, uh, can be equal or unequal, that, that means it could be zu or zu ain't serich loma zu vazu vaafsu, which means A and B can be equal chidushim, or that one could be a greater chidush than the other. So the question is, what did Rev Huna mean when he said, O kesev, O metav? Did he say it was peshita kesev and afilu metav, or was peshita metav and afilu kesev? That was the... That's the first question. So the Gemara brings Rav Asi, a text of Rav Asi. Uh, oops, there, Rav Asi. Okay, it's just good to know that Rav Asi is all the way up here. He's one of the early, one of the early Amarayim. Okay, we're we're down here with uh, Rav Papa. Okay, with Rav and Abai and Rav Papa, we're holding here in the argument. Uh, Rav Huna, by the way, is up here. Okay, he's he's uh, two generations uh, before that. Okay, so in the end of after this, uh, the discussion of do you, do you pay uh, subjectively or objectively, all of a sudden Rev Huna pops up, who's an elder spokesman. Okay, he's he's uh, a, a previous authority, and he says, "Oh, Kesev Ametav." Now Rev Asi, who's in his generation, although in Eretz Israel, according to this chart of uh, he says a statement also, and he says, Kesef Hari Kakarka. Okay, that's his statement. The Gemara wants to know, is he just repeating what Rav Huna said or not? Okay, because you don't have to have him repeating. Uh, the Gemara concludes that he's saying what Rav Huna said. So if we look at his statement, he, he says, Kesef Hari Hu Kakarka. So when you have a comparative statement, the there's always, a, as the Ramchal explained, there's a known and an unknown. So what's the known when I say Kesef Hari Huka Karka? I ask you. Kesef Hari Huka Karka, so then you're saying that um, Kesef and Karka are equal. What if I say this is, l that's true, that's that's the end. So you're saying you know what Kesef, you know what Karka oh. is? Oh. Karka is the, and then you're comparing Kesef to Karka and saying Kesef and right. Karka. Very good. So the known is Karka, and the Hiddish is Kesev, right? Which means I, I, he thinks that there's some problem with saying that Kesev is like Karka, correct? And he has to inform you, no, that Kesev are, is like Karka, okay? So again, you see, that what's, what is the foundation of this problem? We're, we're back again to our chart here. You see, when he says Kesev Harikarka, and Rev Huna said, O Kesev, O Metav. So if we say that those statements are equivalent, that's what the Gemara says. So it's a Chiddush to say now that Kesev is like Metav. Now it's true it's going to be like it, but uh, it's a Chiddush. You might have thought not so, right? Like you learned in... in, 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 in um, what was the Svarachitzona? Svarachitzona was maybe Meitav and even Kesev not. Now that's a dramatic change again in our premises. We kept, we kept thinking up to this point that Kesev was supreme and we just had to handle the two uh, Shavik Kesev. You know, how does, how does the, the land uh, and Metalplan relate to each other? But he comes and he says, you know, you should know something that Kesev is like Metav. What would I would have thought? I would have thought that Metav maybe comes to eliminate even Kesev. Okay, so now what type of Svar is that? You see, that Metav would even be better than Kesev. 
So there, he's he's operating on a different principle. You, up to this point, we were we were thinking that you know, money is supreme. That's what people want when they want to get paid for the damage. And then we just have to worry about Shavikesev and, and land. Which one is better than the other one? Okay, so we started off land was better than Shavikesev, and then for a said Shavikesev is actually better than land. Fine, but now he he changes the relationship, and he says, you know, something you might have thought that Metab would eliminate Kesev. And the answer is no, that Kesev can be used just like Metav. Okay, now I bring this up because this is what I call um, what's going on behind the scenes. You see, when you read these words very quickly, it's only a few letters on a few words on a page, a few lines, and Rashi, okay, let's go on. It, but it's not going on. What's behind these words, a tremendous depth of thought, uh, and, what the, and, and you have to jump from what the words say to what the words mean, you see, which mean what is the problem that's being handled here and what changed from our normal uh, or our previous understanding. So this is a very, very big revolution here, you see, to say that Metav could even have been greater than Kesev. So I said, what's the Svara? We can't say it's, you know, money, money, money. That's the best. Why, why would you think that Metav could even mean that you have to pay in land and you can't even use Kesev. It's a possibility. Of course, that's not going to be the, the Maskana. Okay. You hear what I'm, I'm asking here? Yeah. yeah there okay. Good questions. Right? There's a new philosophical, if I can use that word, a new philosophical understanding here about the relationship of these two things. Right. So, I... Uh, if, if you can't think of something on that, I had I mean, I've been thinking about this. This is another thing that, that what, what has to be done. Uh, um, uh, uh, one of the famous Jews, Albert Einstein, said, I must think. Thinking is a very important process. <laughs> so you have to understand, like, why would you ever say Kesev is Metav? So I just, I came up with a, but Metav is better than Kesev. Okay? So remember Rava's answer, you see. Rava said that if you go to, remember this first one, he said, you know, if you go to, he, uh, he said, you're going to have to give this first answer, Rava. What did he say? Which meant, which meant what? When you go to Bastin, what do you have to give? So when you go to Bastin, you have to give, um, you have to give uh, idiots. Exactly. So when you go to Bastin, I mean, when you go to Bastin, you yeah. could give even Tiburus. No, 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 no. If you no, don't no, go no, to Bezin. When you go to Bezin, you have to give Egypt because you have trouble when you go to Bezin. Exactly. So there you see as far as what the Mazik doesn't want to let go of, land is the best. You see? Because we're, selling, we're telling him, you know, if you're just trying to bother this Nizak and say, take me to court, you know, you, you have a risk of losing your best land. So land has another Bechina that makes it even better than Kesev, that it's a very desirable um, uh, entity, right? Kesev is, only, Kesev is only good as a medium of exchange, right? But land is, uh, is, the, is the item itself. If, if, as, as far as um, uh, physical items in the world, land is a great item. You know, it stays still. No one can steal it. It's very productive. It's always needed. Everybody in the world needs a piece of land to live on and to, to produce. You know, it's a very valuable item. And it's not something that, that a person wants to uh, give up very easily. You know, he'd rather get rid of some of his money sometimes and keep the land because the land values are stable and they go up. I mean, you know, you know, land, land is a very important uh, commodity in the world, okay? So as far as the, the desirability, uh, land could, e is, could, could even be more desirable than Kesev. That's what I just want to show for, and that's why Rubber says, you know, uh, you, if you're trying to bother this uh, Nizak, take me to court. You, you can, you're going to lose your land. Ah, I'm going to lose my land. Oh no, no, I, uh, I'll fess up. I'll tell the truth. You know what I mean? Okay, money. Ah, I'll lose. I'll win. So what's the difference? But land. Ooh. So in that bechina, Metav is better than Kesev. So right. you, you might have thought. You might have thought, says Rev Huna, that when the Torah says metav, it means not kesev. 
Okay, but we're not guessing why. Well, well, because we're really punishing this uh, this mazik and saying, you know, you better watch your generally, uh, you better watch your uh, your dangerous items. You know, my dear friend, you can't be lazy and just say, ah, oh, whatever happens happens. You know, kesera kesera. You know, Torah saying, look, you be careful with your things and guard them. Make sure you don't damage your friend, because it's going to cost you a pretty penny. Your best land is going to go if you do it. Okay, so that's going to just spelling out a svari here, that's going to impress every mazik not to be a mazik. Okay, so that's what you might have thought. Comes along Rev Hoon and says, no, O Kesev, O Metav. Really, Kesev and Metav are equivalent. Okay, now, but what does that change as far as our relationships? That made Kesev now equal to Metav. However, our friends over here, Rev Huna says, wait, the minute you do that, oops, let's see if I can bring this up there. The minute you make an equation you know, between Kesev and Metav, we didn't explain now what's the new Svara, by the way. Oh, Kesev and Metav, what are we going to say? They're alternatives, okay, in other words, desirability, or I mean, in other words, what's the new, every time a move is made, there's a new, I don't know a better word, but then philosophical relationship being exp expressed here. Right, the new, there's now there's new information. Is it one? That they're both the same. That yeah, exactly. Which, which at the end of the day are are equal. Okay, right, right. Or maybe now, but we got to talk really because we don't know what now changed when when Kesev made became equal to Metav. You see, now do they say, oh, is it or A or B now? Because as you said, each one have Milas and Cheshronot. Or did the Torah have to say Kesev to eliminate this possibility of Metav? And what, what next? After we do have Kesev now, what do we say? Why is the Torah Makbid on Metav now? And so once we have Kesev, which, which is not, uh, either you'll say it's as desirable as land, or you'll say that now the Torah wants to tell us, don't think desirability is the factor that we're using here. Now we're changing the, the tune here. Now really it's not desirability. Now it's something X. So Rep. Papa told us what the X was. He said, well, you know, now we're talking, once, once you add, add Kesev into the equation, you're talking about fluidity or convertibility is more important than anything else. I don't care. Uh, I'm not a, 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 a big husset of land. I just want my cow, I want the thing you destroyed, and Kesev's the easiest way for me to, to get my, damage, my my stuff back, so give it to me. So that could have been, this word Kesev could have been just to la fuke Metav. So now what is Metav's relationship to Kesev? Now, well, what's going on here? Are we back to to uh, money again? Do we, or like, your first answer is, okay, it's Oze Oze, they each have positives and negatives. Or no, the, the fact that we brought in Kesev now push Metav down and change what we thought the reason why the Torah is doing Metav. Okay, that's that's the deep discussion that you have to really think about. However, Reb Nachman, let's just jump to Reb Nachman. Reb Nachman says to him, wait a minute, the minute you say that Kesev is equal to Metav, you're going to have to say that Yashiv is also equal to Metav. Why? Because the Pasuk said, <laughs> The, the Pasuk says, Yashiv in uh, uh right? The, the Bryce has said that uh, Yashiv comes to Mara Metaltalin. So the immediately, when you put, you would have put Kesev down here on the bottom, like you originally thought, you have to give Metav first. So you tell me the spur of desirability. Next is money. And with money, you can give Kesev and you can give. But once you, Rev Huna, put Metav up there, then you're going to have a problem because you're going to get this junk coming up with it. You know what I mean? Now what are you going to do? Now the Torah on one hand says give the best and the other hand says no, no, give the worst. We're back to a bias problem. So he says to him, Rev Huna says to him, keep it down. Now I'm going to move this Kesev up, like I told you, but the Yashiv is only going to be if you don't have Metav. Now, in order to do that, he also lost. You always have to ask yourself in every move of the Gemara what was gained and what was lost. There's no one, uh, if anyone comes out 100%, <clears throat> then there would have never been a problem in the first place. Whenever, you, whenever two things don't go together, you're going to have to change some relationship. It can't, uh, 
of course, then they will work together, but something has to change. And that change is what I call a loss, you know what I mean? Like, for instance, when we said that the, the, the sun, the, the Earth goes around the sun, that's very nice. You solved the problem with Mars, but, you know, you did upset now what our eyes see. We see the sun going around the Earth. Now you're telling me the Earth goes around the sun? That, that's upsetting a premise. That's what was lost. Okay, it doesn't mean it's not true. It happens to be that that's the way things are. But you always have to keep track of what was gained and what was lost. We, we, always, would, uh, we always would appreciate a, a solution that uh, keeps our basic premises intact. Okay, that's, that, that's the least um, um, change is the better for us. Okay, the smallest change is the better for us. Sometimes we're forced to take larger changes, but that's it. But here, anyway, with Rev Huna, you see, the, Rev Nachman says to him, look, we have a Hekish here, Yashiv and Kesev. So if you're going to make Kesev equal to Metav, whoops, all this Yashiv is going to be equal to Metav too. So he says, I thought of that, of course. <clears throat> and I'm telling you that you can only give Yashiv when you don't have Kesev and Metav. Okay, so that's how he answers him. So what did he lose? Well, he lost a very simple thing that when the Pusik says Yashiv, the Rabbis uh, Kesev, usually you think that when there's a rebuy, it, it's an equality. That was, that's what Rav Nachman said to him, <laughs> right? Exactly, it's a big Kiddush, right? Big Kiddush of Rapuno. Because normally a rebuy is an equality. Where do we get a rebuy now? Is, uh, so the re now what what would Rav Huna ask you? And of course he said, "Look, I'm forced to say that. You think I want to say that? But to explain the dynamics of these pesukim, I'm forced to say that. You see, because kesef can be used. I hold kesef, and, and of course if I would have said kesef was on the bottom, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have made a split in the pasuk. I said kesef and yashiv is equal, and meitav is on the top. But once, for whatever reason we don't know, we, I, I equate kesef to meitav. So then, I'm forced to say that that the, the, this pasuk meitav uh, uh, comes to eliminate the yashiv and the suban, and that's only bidiyavit. So there's two meitavs. There's there's the meitav aretz, okay, and and uh, and lechatchila meitav in, and I can't use yashiv bechlal. The only thing I can use that's equivalent to meitav is. And Bidiyavid, I could use Yashiv. They ask him, what type of Kiddush is that? You know, doesn't the guy would rather have something than nothing? I mean, if the guy, if the guy really has, so take it and run, because, you know, uh, if you don't get what's at hand, or what do they say, bird in hands were two in the bush, you, you, you stand to get nothing. They say, ah, you might have thought that, uh, you, that you forced the Mazik to go cash in his suvin and give him money. That's what you might have thought. The answer is no. So this is what I call the dynamics. I call this thing on the bottom of the dynamics. And this is what's really going on in the debate. We have these three elements, two pasukim with three elements, and you have to make them fit together. And the whole reason why we got here was how we explained Rabbi Yekiv and Rabbi Shmuel. Okay, so whatever gets concluded is then becomes the standard for the rest of the marechet, for the rest of the system. Okay, that's why it's... Uh, that that's why it's. It, what can I tell you? It's a yam. It's a tremendous, tremendous yam. I, um, I, I I often use this analogy of 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 a spider web. The minute you move one thread in a spider web, so then it re uh, organizes the whole web. So when we start moving these pasuke, metav, kesev, and yashiv, this is not only going to reorganize what's right in front of us in the zikin, but it's going to have to it's going to have ramifications in a lot of other areas, okay, where we use money and uh, how we pay. So that that is uh, what I would say is a very, uh, a very uh, long, short uh, summarization of where we're holding to this point, okay. Uh, and again, it's a touch. I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to. I'm trying to give a touch of what real learning is about. Why do I say a touch? Because the real learning means you have to then think about these things, and you're going to have to read, and you're going to have to reevaluate, and you're going to have to really understand how these things interact and why they interact, and what basis uh, is the 
is the Gemara accepting one answer over the other? And then when, you, when you're in that world, you're in the real world of learning. I mean, the deep world of learning. Of course, you can learn, you can sit in a daf yomi shir also and hear nice things, but you're, you're just catching a glimpse of, of a line or an idea. But the real, um, the real um, laboratory, let's say, of ideas and and the dynamics of the thinking are happening down at this level. That's where that's where Rava and Abaya are talking about. And to tell you the truth, it's happening not only here, but they also have to handle the rest of the web. So wherever this word metab or wherever kessas are being used, whatever they say over here is going to have to now be consistent with the rest of the rest of, of, of shafts too. Okay, so it's a, they're handling very, very big games, uh, very, very, very major problems at a very, very high level. But at least we can begin to appreciate what is, what's at stake, what the problem really is. Okay, now let's go with that uh, summation. Let's now look at the Rishonim, okay? Okay, uh, the Rishonim. It's very interesting, just historical. Uh, again, I never was too interested in history because that wasn't really the curriculum in yeshiva. But it is important to know um, as a background for what's going on. The 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 issue. What? Well, yeah, where everybody fit in, especially in this piece. Um, this piece is going to be all about. You see, we have two answers. Uh, Rav Huna, by the way, is not rejected. Not at all. No one, the Gemara does not say, no, Rav Huna doesn't work because of X, Y, and Z. Right? Here's Rav Huna. He's not rejected. Rav Papa, all the way down here, is not rejected. So, we look at the, con the conclusion of the Gemara, we have a problem. I mean, the Gemara is supposed to not only show us the interaction of the elements, but also show us what's the conclusion of the debate. Only whoever has the last word wins. Okay, so in here, Rav Papa had the last word, so that should be the halach of it. Yet the Gemara uh, takes a page break, uh, <laughs> and then all of a sudden brings Rav Huna, an elder person, and uh, doesn't eliminate him either. So this is a problem now that the Roshonim are going to have to handle, which is who the halacha is. Okay, so now why do we jump to the Roshonim? Babel, uh, you can see that the, the, the schools in Eretz Israel, about by 400 of them, just like so brutal, they've, they've destroyed life in Eretz Israel, uh, you know, the temple body is destroyed, and um, so um, Eretz Israel is not doing very good shape. The big yeshivas always existed in Babel, even from the time of uh, of the first exile and destruction of the first temple. Not everybody came back to Eretz Israel. Um, they always had yeshivas there, but the center uh, in the time of the Tanayim was was over to Israel. I don't think there's any Tanayim from Babel. I mean, you know, anyone mentioned that, that that was really the center. When it comes already to all these problems uh, that we've had with the Romans, uh, so there were two great schools, schools uh, in Babel and the schools in, in Eretz Israel. They communicated with each other all the time. Uh, people back and forth, uh, communicating, uh, people learning on both schools. But um, the Babylonian school um, is the one that continues. Uh, the Romans don't get to uh, Babel. Um, the the uh, Muslims get over there. And the Muslims have their own splits, you know, in their religion. But basically, things are still quiet in Babel uh, for many years, and the main school continues uh, something like a, a thousand years uh, in the in the sphere of the Gaim. You know, till till around one thousand, you had the just in the we had the Sabarayim uh, and the and the uh, Gaonim, those were all Rosh Hashivas in Bavel, who were the center of Jewish life. That's where it was the center of Jewish uh, education, the center of Jewish life was in Bavel. Then in, in 1000, then, the, then in Bavel, they have a lot of problems with the Goyim, uh, and with the, with the Muslims, a uh, whole big war is happening over there, and they start losing prominence, and in around 1000, we get the period of the Rishonim, which starts in North Africa and in France and in uh, Germany. 
So we have these two big schools of Roshonim. Uh, not only are they located in, in different areas, but they have a different style of learning. The, 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 the Sephardic school, and again, everything I say is broad strokes, okay, because everybody knows everything and everyone does everything, but in broad strokes, the, the, the work of the Sephardic school was more in categorization of information. The first big, uh, let me get you, you show them here, the first uh, people that we, we have, uh, we're going to use in this piece as others, I'm, again, only broad strokes, but, but the Rif and Al and Fez, okay, North Africa, uh, I think that's Tun Tunisia, I'm not sure, um, he writes a, a abbreviated Gemara. What do I mean abbreviated Gemara? He writes on the page, but he talks about conclusions. Okay, he's not interested in our piece uh, with uh, Abaya's first answer and, and the two answers of Rava. He just wants to know what's the final word, okay? Because if you want to know the halacha, you have to know conclusions. So he goes through the Gemara's format and he writes his conclusions down. That's what the riff, the riff does. Of course, at the same time, you see you have a little, a little, a little later. Rashi's what, uh, thirty years later, but they're, you know, uh, Rashi, according to this, uh, died uh, two years after the riff. Okay, but the the Ashkenaz school never abandoned the Duff. They were much more involved in the, as I tried to give us a taste of the internal dynamics of the Gemara. Now, whenever you, whenever you um, abbreviate or make a summarization, so you're going to lose. You're going to gain because people have to know what to do. And uh, it's not so simple what the conclusion of the Gemara is. Like in our Gemara, we have two conclusions. Other Gemaras, what's over here may be uh, concluded differently somewhere else. So it's a very big, uh, um, you have to be a very big person to see the, the whole system and to know what the conclusions are. So it's very important to know what to do. So that's a very important aspect of, of Jewish life. And that was the focus of the, the great Sephardic school. And the uh, Ashkenazim were more involved in the internal workings. And from the internal workings of the Gemara, you're going to get to the conclusion. But they want to know you. They want to explain to you what the process is, because the the Gemara entails not only information but the process uh, of how the how the how the result came out, and that's very very important. Uh, um, that's a critical because you, you you have to know what was at stake and what was concluded. Um, you can't just read things simply because it's the conclusion of a very subtle debate. So they the the Ashkenazic school was more involved in the the daf. Now, the, the Rambam made the next big break, because he went off the duff, you see, uh, and that was a big revolution, because he held that the people, people were not capable now of, of learning the halacha from the duff anymore. It became, the system it became too, too great, and, and the kid, kid Katna Sidorovs was too big, and people could not, were not going to come to the last, the final conclusion anymore. So he said, I'm going to rewrite the whole Torah Shabbat, Per Mishnah Torah. Okay, I'm a, all you need is, is my book, and now you'll be able to recreate the whole, um, the whole Torah Shabbat. Per. The problem with that is... His expectation was people would stop learning Gemara? He thought that they were not, not that they wouldn't learn, as a matter of fact, I think basically in the Sephardic school, the, the people moved more toward the halacha than the Gemara, but I think that he felt, from what I read inside from him, that people were not capable of handling the Gemara anymore. It was too complex of an issue, and they were, they were mixing up what the Gemara was doing and coming to wrong conclusions. And he felt he was the only one left who had the tradition from the Rif and the Rimagash, uh, that and, and all the Gaonim, uh, that could put the thing together properly. And that's why he wrote the Mishnah Torah. That was his way of saying, look, my dear friends, if you're not going to, if, you, if you're not intelligent enough to handle it, I'm going to now give you the conclusion, because I don't believe you are intelligent enough to handle it. He felt he was the last of the great people able to handle the whole system. Anyway, that caused a big revolution in the Jewish world. Oh, are you still there?
ઉપ I'll continue anyway. Uh, okay, that caused a very big revolution in the Jewish world. Um, he was put in Kherim, he was taken out of Kherim, a big revolution. In the end, everybody realized that what the Ramam did was essential because people really needed a um, abbreviated view of what was going on in the Gemara in order to understand what the halacha was. So that was the big revolution of the Rambam. In our little piece, uh, we're going to discuss uh, other people. I have three other people, but really two. Basically, the Rama, who also was a Sfarad, and he was um, um, also a halachist. He brought down halacha, but he definitely was an anti uh, kabbalist he didn't he disagreed with the ramban that with his emphasis on kabbalah and he said that you really have to learn uh shot um he's a very very big rishon and we're going to deal with his piece and after we have the rush the rush is a very interesting person he comes from ashkenaz he studied with the bali tosfos and then unfortunately uh as happens too many times, the local uh, Goyish authorities decided that they would come after him, and he s escaped to Spain by the seat of his pants before he was... Oops, Avi? Avi, are you back again? I'm back. My, my electric blinked, and uh, I got... <laughs> okay. All right. So... Okay, so I, what I just I just kept talking so we wouldn't have a blank space. But basically, the Rambam was a gigantic revolution, and their books were burnt. And they said that's why the Talmud later, and he was rejected. He was accepted, but no one could fight the Nesher Hagadol. Why was he called a Nesher Hagadol? Because a Nesher flies very high and is able to see the whole panorama of reality, and he could see all of Shas. There weren't very many people uh, that had that view. And uh, he definitely was a great, even though he was very, very controversial what he did, and uh, not only in in form, but in content. Because up to this point, you could always check what a person said by his proof. For instance, even the riff, you, you knew where he was holding on the daf, and you can say why he said the halacha the way he was. But when the Rambam wrote his summary of all of the... No one could really hold exactly what uh, interreaction was creating this halacha. Sometimes it was obvious because we knew where the Gemara was, and sometimes it wasn't obvious because he's using the Rishalmi or he's using the Gonic tradition. So he became very, 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 very uh, problematic in form because of that, and the Ashkenaz schools did not uh, go along with that. Uh, then we were, we're up to the rush. The rush. I explained was a person who, who lived in Ashkenaz. He's an Ashkenazi. He, he learned with the Bali Tosfos, um, came from that school, and then, as often happens, the Goyim decided uh, to give him problems, and he escaped by the skin of his teeth to to to, Sfarat, to, to Spain. So there, the rush represents really a bridge between the two great schools that existed at that time, the Ashkenazic school and the Sephardic school. And he writes um, his work, which is really a combination, again, running along, he does not, like the Rambam, rewrite everything, he, he, he writes uh, on the on the daf and explains what the, what the halacha is, okay, but bringing in all the other Roshonim before him also. Uh, and explaining how the, for instance, in our piece, we want to see that the Riff argues with Rabbeinu Tam, and he's involved in that interchange. That was his field. So he's a very, very uh, interesting bridge between the two schools. Um, 
I just mentioned the Ran here because the Rabbeinu Nisim is uh, even after him, and he's the one that brings us the Ramah that we're going to be using. Okay, but basically the, the school even today um, separate between the people who are involved in Iyun and Pilpul and the people who are involved in Halacha, even today. And you see that the, I, I, in the yeshiva world also, that the, uh, the, 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 the Sephardic system is much more geared toward Halacha. And the, the Ashkenazic system is much more geared to analysis and pilpul. But again, broad strokes, you know, you have great uh, Sephardim that do pilpul, and you have great Ashkenazim that do halacha. I mean, Rebbe uh, should be well, I hope he returns to us, but uh, never, left, never left the Torah, and uh, he's a great hal halachist. Uh, and you know, you know, <coughs> Rakhayim, you know, this is great, great people, and and it just seems that even today, the it's just where you're going to spend your time. You either spend your time learning inside the Gemara and um, and the interaction that's going on there, or going toward conclusions. Now, we're Bezut Hashem going to see this this next level. That's why I'm giving this quite. Uh, detailed introduction, but we're going to now go into this level. Now in our piece here, we're going to deal with four different Rishim, and they're each going to have a different idea about what the Halach is. Okay, how much time do we have, by the way? Did I lose you again, Avi? Oh boy, I lost you again? No, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, good. Like 15 minutes. Good, okay, very good. Okay, uh, that'll be good enough for our introduction. Now here we have an interesting uh, machlokus between these four great Rishonim. And I'm just going to briefly, we're going to go, go inside in each one of them because again, the, the, it's not only what they say, it's, it's on what basis did they say it that makes it interesting. Okay, we, we understood the Gemara to the level of our capacity, and now we have to understand now a deeper understanding. Did they agree with what we said or not agree, and what exactly did they add, you see? So here they're going to have to add the halachic aspect to it, because we said we left off with two different halachas, either like Rav Papa or Rav Huna. And then they're going to also talk about what we were talking about in the beginning of this class, the re relationship between these pasukim, metap, psub, and kesef, how does it work? So those, that's going to be the very, very interesting uh, dimension that this, these Rishonim could give to us. Okay, now I didn't mention Rashi here. We're going to look at Rashi first. Um, people generally want to say Rashi is holding like Rep Papa, which means, uh, like the riff, that you can use either Metav, Subin, or Kesef equally. Okay, because uh, we'll, we'll look at Rashi, we'll see what he says. You know, he's very, very important. But again, since Rashi is talking about the dynamics of the page, and he expects you from how he talks to understand what the conclusion is. So it's harder to understand what he says, the halacha. Rabbeinu Tam in this piece is going to talk halachically and tell us what the conclusion is. The Rambam, of course, is going to talk halachically, but not tell us where he got it from. And the Ramah is going to talk halachically, but he's going to also not tell us where he got his halacha from, and that's going to be part of the problem here. So we're going to now go to the halachic stage and try to integrate that with our learning. That's going to be the excitement here. So let's just go quickly through the four shitot. I made little diagrams here just to get us started, and we're going to actually do the real life thing, don't think not so. But the, the riff holds like Rav Papa. He's going to say that clearly, and he concludes that when the mazik has to, when the mazik wants to pay back the nizak, he can use kesev, meitav, or supin. I would have maybe put it the other way, but whatever it is, when I did this a while ago, you can either make, uh, or, or the, if you try to do land, that has to be the best. Then, if, then you can use any type of supin. Because we said that we're a papa, that really we're just interested in getting you your money back. Supin, you'll. Is a, is definitely a a cool of the Torah to say you can use supin, but that far to stretch, the Torah says, okay, we'll make it easier for the mazik. He can get sued because the Nizak can get his money back. But when it comes to land, only Metav, because anything less than Metav, Nizak will be stuck with land that he, can't, he won't be able to sell. So what good is it for him? He doesn't want land. He wants his cow back or whatever. Rabbeinu Tam is going to Pesach like Rev Huna in this piece. 
he's going to say, like Rav Huna said, oh, Kesev Ometav. And if you don't have Kesev Ometav, so then it's the only time you can use Subin. Okay? So the Rush is going to explain to us why they each Pesach. That's where the Rush is going to come in. Now we have our, the Rambam. Okay? The Rambam, of course, is problematic. We don't know who he's going by because he comes to a Shita that we never even heard of, which is all from what the Rambam does. But we have to explain what is he. Uh, where do you get what he said? But the Rambam says that Metav is the worst and Kesev and Shava Kesev is the best. So in other words, uh, you pay, if you have Kesev or Shava Kesev, you have to pay with either one, but the last thing you pay is land. Okay, now that we haven't seen so clearly in anybody we studied yet. Okay, we saw that Subin, that uh, Rabbeinu Tam holds, uh, even the Rif holds Rav Huna that way, just as a Pasak like him, but to say that Kesem and Shavikev is on top and Metav is worse, problem is where does the Rambam get it from? That's going to be the problem with the Rambam, and we're going to have a Machlokas in the next stage of the Achronim, they're going to try to tell us who he's like. So the Gro is going to say he's really Rev Huna, and he's going to have to read, read the Gemara for us, and the Nachlis David is going to say he's Rev Papa, and that's going to explain how Rev Papa learns the Gemara that way. Okay? But that'll be taken to the Rambam, which it often is. Because again, we don't know where he gets what he gets. We only have the raw text in front of us and his conclusion. Well, how do the two things go together? Well, that's what the Achron I'm going to talk about. Now, the fourth piece here is the Ramah, with a hey, not the Ramon, Ramah Islis, who's on the Shulchan Aruch, but the Ramah, who's a Rishon. He comes to a position that really the, f the first thing that you give when you want to pay damage is Kesev. If you have money, you have to give money. If you don't have money, so then you can give Shavu Kesev. And if you don't have money in Shavu Kesev, then you can give the best of your land. Okay? So, again, who is he Pesach like? We have his, we have his Pesach in the Ran, and the Ran brings it, but we don't, again, understand where he got it from. Where did he get this thing? It's a new idea that Kesev is first, Subin is second, and Metav is last. Okay? It doesn't seem to be Red Papa. Red Papa seemed that everything was equal. That Subin was equal to Kesev, and only and only and Metav is equal to Kesev, is he's equal to Subin. Where do we see this hierarchy? Uh, Rev Huna says that Kesev is equal to Metav, and he puts Subin on the bottom. It doesn't look like it's it's him. So, where does the Ramah hold? So that's going to be the excitement of the next stage that we're going to talk about. Is the Smach Locus we shown him? We have to understand what they say, and then how they read the Gemara, and. That's the really the next stage in learning because the 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 Rishonim their Gemara was the Gemara that we have, but they have now jobs to 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 do because they have to now tell the next generation, you know, not only what the halacha is, but how to read the Gemara properly. Okay, so that's what we're going to be involved with now. So I just want to start here. I don't know if it helps anyone, and maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But uh, Kesev is always good, according to everybody, as a choice. But the Rif and the Rambam say that uh, Subin is the first choice, and uh, the Rif says even Metav. And the Rambam says that Metav is the second choice, and Rabbeinu Tam says that Subin is the second choice, and the Ramah, he says that Subin is the second choice. Metav of Metav Aretz. Metav Aretz. Okay, when I say Metav, Metav Aretz. Okay, good. So let's now, uh, okay, so maybe that's a good place to stop. Um, I'll, well, let's stop at the riff. Okay, the riff is short. Okay, let's read the riff, and then and we'll slowly go through the, we have a few more minutes, we'll slowly go through the Rishonim. And, um, good, okay. So um, that, that's what I, what I wanted to present here is not only the technical aspects of the learning, which we did through the Svarim, but also what, what um, each generation does. Why are they so necessary in the process of learning, okay? And that's the whole idea of doing this demonstration here. Okay, so we have the riff, riff say. Let's read the riff a little. Okay. You can read the riff. Yes. So basically he was saying that there was a question, and it's necessary to say both. Right. Metav sedeu Oh, that's something else. That's the pasuk. He's saying, well, 
mean, he just uh, quoted the whole thing. He just quoted the whole pasuk, right? This pasuk is talking about where he's paying with karka. So he's saying that the pasuk does not apply to metalpulin because metalpulin is metal. The definition of metalpulin is metal because of a specific reason. The Tanya, Kesa Yashal Bal of the Rabbi Shav Kesa, I feel it's stupid. It brings a raya that the Bryce is saying Kesa, Yashal Labal of that Rabbi Shav Kesa, I feel it's stupid. That that um, the pasuk is telling you that anything which is Shav Kesa, even Subin has a din like Kesa. Right. So, if according again, you see, the the important thing to realize, and this seems to be Rav Papa, okay, is that Kesev is the king here, meaning that what we right. what we want the Nizak to have is Muni. We want we want that 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 matbeya, that that coin in his hand, okay? Because then they'll have. But Kesev means uh, fluidity. That means you're going to be able to get what you want uh, real quick. So therefore, the Torah said a filu subin. So anything that's more domedikesiv is 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 better. So that's why subin is better than land because land is more do, more domedikesiv because you'll be able to get kesiv for it faster, right? Right. So when it comes to land, that's the poor stepsister. And if you give the best of the land, that'll be equal to, to giving money, right? right? Because you'll get your money for it. So the whole idea is where the Torah wants you to get you, the, the Nizak wants to, the Torah wants the Nizak to get his money back. That's it. And whatever's the best, of course, is, is money, but the Torah says that um, you can use Shavu Kesev also. We're not going to uh, hurt the Nizak so much to say that he can only give money. We're going to give him a, a cooler that he can give Shavikesev. But when it comes to land, we're only going to let Meitav in. Since Meitav is, since land itself is not so easy to convert. It doesn't have convertibility. Okay? So that seems to be Rev Papa. Okay? And that's. Right. And that's the riff. Yes, please. Right, that's really his, his lashon that he's saying that could be sold anywhere. Um, except for land, which has a disadvantage, that it can't be movable. So therefore, for land, you have to give metav. So he's saying that metav of land, which is sold readily, would then be equal to metal, which is also sold readily. And easily. Right. Right. And the big surprise here was to say that metalton is better than land, right? Because, again, you always have to say, what was our original premise? The original premise was, come on, land is, is better than Subin. I'd much rather have land than, 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 than Bran, you know? But in another aspect, it's not. And that's, that was the big Hiddish of Repapa, that the, in the aspect of convertibility into cash, it could turn out that Subin is more easily conver convertible into cash than land was. You have a few, only a few customers. But best land, that has the same convertibility into cash. Okay, so the the riff in this first part of the riff is 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 telling us the pasuk like um, like Rip Papa explaining the pasuk of Meitab is a limitation only in land. You see, that's very important. It, it's it's not Meitab in media chrin alo, right? It's what the in Meitab say Meitab kar hani mili hechad the yehiv le kar kaoi. You see, and if I ask you what's the diuk now Meitab said they are of karmo. What's the diuk? What's the inference? What can't you use? Meitav today, meitav kamei. Yeah. What can't you use? Um, you can't use land which is which is uh, uh, ziburis. Exactly. Or exactly. Exactly. It says v'hod the benin and the pasuk. Why do we need the pasuk? Meitav today, meitav karmo. Hani mi lechadi hivle kark. It comes to eliminate only benin and ziburis land. Right, but metaltalin, 
That has nothing to do with this Pasuk. Metatlin is equal to Kesev because you can always get money for it, you see? Uh, okay, that's the thing. Now, here's number two in the riff, Afogav. We have a gav the pligi Rav Huna Barav Asi. Hakaim Lon Karav Papa Barav Huna Barav Yerav Yeshua de Basraninu. So even though there's a machlek between Rav Huna and Rav Asi, they will pass like Rav Papa and Rav Huna Barav Yerav Yeshua who are Basrai. So he's telling you a rule in Psaq that you pass them like the later one. The later one being, being, um, Rav Papa, or Rav Hunenberg, Rav Yeshua, which is not, you know, it doesn't apply here. He's not here. Rav Hunenberg, right. Rav Yeshua is not here, is he? Uh, yes, both of them are. Rav Papa, when he, both of them came oh, from Rav. they came together, right. He also Rav Papa, Rav Hunenberg, Rav Yeshua, they came together. Okay, right. right. I got very important there. Okay, so here's a very important Pesach here, and he tells you why the Pesach is. As we said, the Gemara left us off hanging with two different uh, conclusions. Okay, right. and... He says, even though Rav Hun and Rav Asi argue, but the halacha is like Rav Papa, and he tells us why, because they're the Basroi. So we, we have our Bruch Hashem and Eisvul. Again, well, it's too many colors there. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here the Gemara left off with Rav Huna all the way up here. But the, the beginning of the Gemara talked about the uh, Rav's problem and Rav Papa, who's their student's answer. And here's Rav Hun and Rav Bishu, he's a contemporary. And they're called Basroi. Why? They're called after Rav Huna. So that's an interesting question. Why do we go after? Him? So I explain because we can we 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 um, we um, conclude that the later authorities uh, knew how to make the proper halachic decision. Like now, most people go according to the Mishnah Brewer. Not everybody. You don't have to. But I mean, Nushru is accepted. Okay. Uh, people that even in his generation. Go ahead. It, it's not only that they know how, but they, they, they have a much broader view. I think I saw this somewhere. Maybe you said it, or maybe I saw it somewhere. Is that they have a broader view because they saw much more? The yeah, I, 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 to arrive at a better conclusion? Yeah, now I, I disagree with that, by the way. I heard that no, also. I went to, I, I, and I, I, read this. I know you read it. And I and from what my my brief and I, I say only brief and uneducated uh, uh, research into that that was said by Albert Einstein. That was said by who? Albert Einstein. Really? That statement, right? Now I don't know if he's the only one who said it. It could have been some nice Jewish boy with more religious conviction said it. That could be. But I know someone told me that he said it when he when they asked him about science because he advanced science and he said that we only we only advance that science because we're on the backs of the others. So I disagree with that statement. Okay, for, for whether it's worth because because this hit Katniss Adoros. So by definition, the people that came later did not see what the people came before. Okay, and no, I think. But, they, but but somebody who came later, for example, um, some. He, he gets the benefit of the people that saw before. Right, right. So he, nah, so Rav, nah, Rav, nah. Um, Rav Papa was able to know what Rav said, what Abaya said, what Rav Shesha said, what, what Rav said, what Rav Huna said, and therefore he's able to refine the halacha. Yeah, but Rev, what, did, what did we, are you trying to tell me that Rev Huna didn't know the didn't, didn't know the uh, the proper conclusion because he didn't know what Rav and Rabbian would say a uh, next generation later? So that's why. Okay. okay. Do you right. think that uh, you you think that Rev Huna didn't know what, what he knew as much as Rabbi Akiva? No, there's a Gemara in Yesh Mechlin that says that that um, that um, that who is it the the smallest Talmud of Hillel? Wisdom and Yishnachim says that they, they even knew the Havayas of Abayah and Rabba. Right? So the Tanoim were discussing all of the back and forth of Abayah and Rabba. So they did know it. That's clear. Right. Right. So where did I read it? So what, what is, okay, so uh, uh, your explanation? No, I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to also do research. Like I said, because my brief research, I, that Albert Einstein said, it. I'll have to do more research on that. And it doesn't seem to me that that's our view, because our view is that the greats, set the, the foundation stones and they knew, as you said, they knew all the, the, the problems of Abai and Rava. And that was their conclusions. And all Abai and Rava is bringing up the, uh, understandings by presenting that. It's like, does the Chomash know that there's a conflict between uh, uh, Meitav and, uh, and Yashiv? Does the Chomash know? Well, of course the Chomash knows. 
Right. You're supposed to understand what the Chumash means. So anyway, that's why I think. But but my 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 understanding is that because the we presume that when it came to deciding issues, the last people are the ones that decide. That's all. It's for instance like in the, in the Mishnah Brewer. In the Mishnah, do you think that the Mishnah Brewer? Well, he's a tremendous work. I mean, there were a lot of people who who came to different conclusions in the Mishnah Brewer. Right. The, the, the reason why we're going we're going according to Mr. Brewer is because really he is summing up and totaling sort of even sometimes it's even like a poll. Like uh, you know, he, he's saying, okay, the the the, the, the Shach and the Taz hold this way. Where on the other hand you have you have the Chai Yodam and you have the um you have the Beit Yosef and you have the Rambam all that way. So therefore we're going to go according to to most Rishonim or going to most Achrayim or some Ach- or, or or sometimes he doesn't. But but uh, you know he, he usually there's, there's a He's taking everybody into account in order to come up with the Okay, there's two there's two days poll taking. That's again that's more the 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 the, 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 the base Yosef way of doing things. Okay. But there's also the interaction and decision making, okay? But so we we, we go when it comes to decision making in halacha, whatever the exact svar is we go according to the later authorities, and everyone agrees with that. By the way, we, it's not it, it's not like a Tosos or Randall Thomas, who's the whole like Rev Huna. He also knows that that that's a rule. Okay, so the question is going to be of the rush is well, if he knows that rule, how come he went against that rule? That's going to be the problem of the rush. Okay, but anyway, the riff, and we'll do some research on that. That's interesting. You can ask people. I mean, I'm just okay. Uh, but definitely, I, I don't like this idea of, of this, uh, you know, if, if anything, they saw less. We, as the generations go on, they're saying right, okay, a little less of the total picture. And anyway, here, um, oops, where are we holding? So here's the riff, let's, okay, as a summation. <clears throat> the riff has two parts. The first part is right. Peshat and like, like Rev Papa, explaining like that the Pusik like is limited, is. right? It's only limited to right. Karka. That's Meitav, and that all Sub is Meitav, right? And then he's going to give us the Halacha. And he has a problem, right. because Rav Huna disagrees with this Halacha, right? Right. right? But we go, he says, the rule is right. you go to Basra, the Basra is for Papa Rav Huna, very sure. That's it. That's the riff. Okay, so next week, Bez Dashem will 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 jump into Rashi. We'll see what he says, and of course, he's not going to say the halacha maforish, but we're going to have to understand from what he says what he would hold, and uh, then we'll keep going to this level. Very good. No, this is very good. I like this. I like the outline you did of the Gemara because I, I never really sit, you know stop to take a look back and see where the Gemara going over a few blot. You know, especially it's hard sometimes to really understand the the pattern because there's always something new getting stuck in there and really to, to try to understand what the relationship is between one, one sugi and the next and really how it's all relating back to the Mishnah and explaining the halacha, you know, it's, it's, it's good. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. I'm very happy we're doing this. It's a, it's a wonderful occasion. I, and I hope, you know, people will, will um, it's going to be hard because it, it's long, but, it, it's, but, it, but, I'm, but it's very thorough and it's showing some extremely important principles here, like you said. Instead of just struggling with with the leaves on, and now let's go to another leaf and a new tree and a new rock. You see, it's trying to see the 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 system, the pattern, and 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 what is being said and why it's being said. Uh, and that's a very very important thing that people miss because you don't see this the daf is up this way. <laughs> okay, for Hashem for word. Okay, we said uh, okay. So we'll see you visit Hashem next week. Okay. Uh, have next a great week. next week. Uh, yeah. Have a great okay. week. Goodbye now. Thank you very much. Call to.